Hello, my name is Hannah Packman and I am the communications director for National Farmers Union. I wanted to thank you guys so much for joining the screening of Minari and our post film discussion. I'm really, really glad that you had the chance to see this beautiful movie. I really loved it. And I think that uh, no matter where we're from or what our history is, we can all kind of relate to the experiences in one respect or another. When we were thinking about who to invite to our post film discussion, we felt that no one really could speak more to the themes in the movie better than people who have immigrated to the United States and started farming. We are really, really grateful to have two immigrant farmers with us today who have agreed to share their own experiences with us. Jorge Marzuka, who's originally from Mexico and Mohammed Hanan, who is originally from, Bang from Bangladesh. Jorge and Mohammed have both been farming in Massachusetts for the last several years. So again, thank you both so much for taking your valuable time to chat with us today. I am really looking forward to hearing more about you and your farms. Um, so to start out with, can each of you just tell us a little bit more about where you're from and how you got here and what your experiences are with agriculture, what you grow, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Jorge, if you wanna start us out and then Mohammed will give you a chance to chat as well. Hi, hi everybody, nice, nice to meet you. Um, uh, my name is Jorge Marzuca, uh, I'm from Mexico and I used to be a farmer. I used to be a broccoli farmer down in Mexico. Uh, down south, Michoacan, that's that's south of uh, the south of Mexico, and uh, we got here four years ago, five, five years ago, and I, I really didn't think I I was gonna keep farming up here because uh, everything was so different, but but then I think it was luck that we were walking downtown Boston and then we saw we saw the sign. Uh, this publicity from New Entry, New Entry Farming Sustainable Project, and and we just call, and then they offer classes, um, very accessible classes to 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 practice farming here in New England, and then one thing led led, led to another, and right now we're farming a two acre property, and everything is going is going very well. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Mohammed. I know you've worked a little bit with New Entry Sustainable Farming Project as well, but if you wanna tell us a little bit about how you ended up here and what you're growing, all of those kinds of things. Uh, thank you, Hannah. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, and thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Mohammed Hanan. Um, I am from Bangladesh and I came here in 2008. Um, with my family, my wife, and the son uh, back in those days. I raised and born uh, in the northern part of the country uh, on a small family farm in Bangladesh. Uh, then when um, I was farming uh, quite over five years, then I went to the city. Uh, I attended uh, a university. I did my master's from there. Uh, then in 2008, uh, I came to the United States. Uh, I came to study and my wife, uh, she uh, got a diversity immigrant visa, uh, some of you might know. Uh, so we have finally decided uh, to move here um, for you know, better opportunity and uh, things like that. And farming was always um, in my mind uh, and I was uh, working back then uh, after coming here and uh, I was always uh, thinking, about farming and I first hand realized that um, how difficult it is to access good food. Um, and I honestly, I didn't have that capability of buying uh, foods from Whole Foods or other you know, high-end uh, stores. And I was thinking, how can I grow my own? And uh, th that was the motivation behind it. And uh, I, I found the information from New Entry while I was searching farming online and suddenly it came up and I was looking more um, about New Entry's program and finally I applied to them. And that was really a game changer. Uh, at that time I had a full-time job and uh, I didn't have a lot of money to invest. And New Entry's program was um, 
perfectly fitting with my goal. Uh, I don't need to invest a lot of money while I am doing some, you know, practice and experimenting and learning new techniques that uh, I was not used to uh, back in those days. We used to uh, practice traditional farming, but uh, here all mechanized and uh, things like that. Labor is very expensive uh, and the techniques are uh, quite different. The growing season is short in Bangladesh. So that was not a problem. All the year you can grow and fitting everything in a, a shorter season was not easy. So, and I, I found uh, an inventory program and they helped me uh, teaching all, um, all kinds of stuff from business planning to, you know, technical assistance. And the land was um, a very reasonable price. So I, I could afford. And I am in third year. Uh, I have completed the graduate program from new entry and this is my fourth year on my own uh, farm um, list from the town of Lincoln. Yeah. So it was uh, quite interesting for me. Thank you. That's, that's great. Thank, thank you so much for, for telling us a little bit more about where you all are from um, and a little bit more about wh what you've been growing in the last couple of years. Uh, I know you mentioned some of the challenges that you've been facing. Um, you know, I don't think it's a secret that farming can be a really, really hard job. You have to know how to do a lot of different things. Um, in the movie, they run into all sorts of logistical difficulties with accessing water and navigating the farm lending system and learning to speak a new language and finding new markets to sell to. You know, it's hard enough to do if you're a native born American and then there's all these additional challenges if you're new to this country. Um, so if you guys are willing to, I'd like to hear a little bit more about like, what did you find most difficult as far as some of these like logistical things like with growing seasons? I know you mentioned Mohammed, um, like especially in your first year, like what what was the biggest the biggest problems you were dealing with? Um, well, for me, for us, the most the most difficult thing was the, the markets. Um, in Mexico, we are used to grow grow like one crop in big quantities and then sell it to one buyer, and and here uh, we. It took us like two, three, took us two or three years to find out this this system, but we found out that the CSA system, the community community supportive agriculture, it's 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 a very good way to 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 find a market. Um, and it's not also the the winters. The winters up here are very are very very, very harsh. Uh, right now we're getting a uh, 18 inches, 20 inches of of snow right now, and 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 that's harsh. So the seasons are very very sh well shorter than where where I used to farm. And but but going back to the to the to the markets, uh, another thing it's it's very was very hard for me to set was the was the prices, the the selling prices because. Um, your effort is too much in, in agriculture. It's a very physical job, and for example, in July you have to get up at five, four, five a.m., and then it gets dark eight thirty, nine, nine p.m., and it's it's long shifts, and and then when you see that you sell, uh, for example, a, a bunch of turnips in in one eighty two dollars, and and it takes you so much to. Uh, grow them and then harvest them and then get them to the market. Um, at, the, at, the, at first, you get you get quite disappointed, but then you have to. That's why that's why it's very important that you uh, do your research and and for example, with at least with me and Mohammed, new entry was very helpful because uh, you have to do a, a business plan. If you don't do a business plan and you just go with your gut. Um, it's going to be very hard for you to to succeed, and it's going to take you a lot, a lot more time than than it should take you. So, so I think those are the very the very most difficult things, the the markets, 
uh, and your business plan. And then you have to acknowledge that you have to go with the flow too. Everything is going to be changing. At first, my, my business plan was to grow uh, three, four different crops. But then I found out that my clients and my CSAs, they want 20, 25, they want diversity. So, so you have to adapt to your market, um, but, but you also have to do your numbers, not because your clients want 25, 40 uh, different vegetables, you're gonna grow them. You're gonna, you have to do your numbers on each one of them and then see what's, what's, uh, what's, what's good for you. And then you can do some some vegetables that that can uh, maybe they don't leave too much profit to you, but it's like it they're gonna bring more more people in more clients. Um, for for me, it's uh, uh, the broccolini and and the and some tomatoes, specialty tomatoes. So so i think basically those are the hardest things and you have to always be be willing to adapt and to change and and always have a business plan and and check all your numbers all the time yeah absolutely i think um i think a lot of farmers have dealt with a lot of similar issues especially early on uh, mohammed i don't know if you wanted to add anything um to that about some of the challenges that you've dealt with Oh, I think you're muted. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I think uh, Jorge really covered some of the important uh, issues. Uh, uh, for me, the biggest uh, challenge was at the beginning, um, I was working full time and I was looking um, quite a bit of time to find my own land before finding new entries information. And honestly, uh, I was about to give up uh, looking at the land, the price uh, and the logistics that it requires. Um, then suddenly I came up uh, with the information of new entry, uh, which was really, really important uh, for me at that time that um, I had the opportunity to do my research. Uh, what really I like, is it really, good for me, uh, you know, starting a new farm uh, and uh, sustain myself. Uh, so uh, I was able to do my experiment last three years, um, what it really takes, uh, how difficult it is, learning the techniques and all the stuff uh, without, you know, breaking yourself. Uh, so I think uh, th this is one of the important thing uh, I really uh, mm, recommend for the new farmers, uh, you know, uh, and uh, even the policymakers to find out how they can support more uh, initially as we don't have a lot of investment, you know. Uh, so th that was really a big challenge. And the learning curve, you know, uh, riding tractors, uh, doing your own stuff, uh, irrigation, uh, everything is uh, uh, challenging. Uh, back back home, you don't need to worry about all kinds of, it seems like you are basically an engineer while you are running a farm. <laughs> irrigation to, uh, you know, you need to know everything. So that was uh, quite interesting, uh, growing your own seedlings, uh, but, um, and uh, marketing is uh, another big challenge as uh, Jorge has mentioned. Um, I started uh, growing few stuff, uh, uh, organic, basically, um, you know, uh, heirloom tomatoes and peppers. I, I had uh, decided that, okay, I'll make some heirloom tomato sauce and hot pepper sauce, then it didn't came out well. Then similar, similarly like Jorge, then I had to look for other, you know, I was experimenting with a lot of other uh, varieties and stuff. And then last year I started my CSA, uh, which is now you need to grow more than 40 different crops. Uh, so it's, it's uh, challenging day by day. So uh, you, you get to adapt, 
then when the pandemic started it's another challenge we were not able to go to farmers market um, and selling directly it's uh, it's a different kind of challenge uh, we are facing now you need to use all kinds of tools um, you know facebook instagram whatnot so it's it is uh, constantly there are something new a new coming up and uh, yeah so well it sounds like both of you have really learned an awful lot in the last few years and i know that the pandemic has really been difficult for a lot of farmers um, and has created a lot of new challenges um, the family in the movie, in addition to some of the logistical issues that they deal with, they also deal with some more personal problems, you know, with finding community in their new home and with, you know, holding their family together through all of the different challenges that they're facing. Um, so I was wondering if you feel like beyond some of just like the day to day difficulties with running a farm and learning how to deal with, you know, all of the different logistical things do you feel like you were also dealing with personal issues as well and and what did you do to kind of overcome those issues um well yes a, a lot of personal issues come come up um while, while you farm like like with every every other job you do and and the thing is that um when when, when you farm what I love about farming is, is, is that you get more involved with your family. Um, I live uh, I live in a in a house with my wife, my mother, my father, my stepfather, and my and my sister, and everybody gets gets involved in farming, and and we get to work together. Um, sometimes you don't see that as an advantage, but but I think it's it's a it's a it's an advantage because you get to to get quality time with your family, and 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 at the end of the day, it's, it's your family, and and that's one of the things I love about about farming. You get closer with your with your family. Uh, everybody tries to work hard, and 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 I think it's a very a very good thing. And but you also have more more um, more a little more conflict, but nothing you cannot solve. That that's a good thing. And another thing is that at least where, where I think where, where we are in Massachusetts and the community really, really, um, really sees how hard this is to farm and they, they want to help um, and they try to help. Um, when, when you go to the farmers markets, they always um, support you and, and try to, to at least um, um, psychologically try to try to push you and try to try to tell you that you're doing a good job and that you have to keep going and that and the, the work we do is, is essential is it's it's feeding feeding the, the families so with this pandemic a lot of people at least in my community a lot of people got more involved with our farm because because at the beginning of the pandemic last year, February, March, a lot of people was worried that they wouldn't be able to get some, some food if the supply, supply chain, uh, chain broke and we, and we wouldn't get food of here from, from California or from Florida or from, or from other states down south when they don't, where they don't get harsh winters. So a lot of people reach out to us and, and and supported us and say, okay, um, we're gonna we're gonna um, um, pay you in advantage so you can secure your seeds. Uh, that, that was another thing last year, and this year too, uh, seeds uh, where I bought where I buy them are are almost um, uh, completely gone, um, and and that's something that's something. Um, well, it, it's 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 difficult, so you have to plan. But at least, at least, I think people see it and they they support. They a lot of people pay an advantage. We don't have so shortage of of soil, of of seeds, of, of uh, organic fertilizer. 
So, um, and, and they also want to learn. They want they want to see where the food is coming from. So I think that's that's an advantage at the end. And I I know there are bad things, but I think I think there are more good things that that at the end of the day balance and and have a, a, a good position again in, in the scale. So some yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah, I think a lot of folks have a newfound appreciation for some of these essential workers, people like you who are, you know, feeding their neighbors and um and helping us all kind of get by through the pandemic. Um, Mohammed, I don't know if you wanted to add anything about your own experiences and some of some of the more personal challenges you faced in the last couple of years. Sure. Um, uh, I, I find farming uh, is a sense of freedom for me. Um, I like outdoor and um, from the start, um, there are a lot of people uh, help me uh, along the journey. Uh, I, I made a lot of friends uh, doing farming, uh, made friends from here in different communities. And one of the things I love about growing my own food is the diversity. Uh, while I was buying from the supermarket, you buy, you know, the diversity is less. You buy similar food over and over and over while you have tons of cucumbers varieties, tomatoes, hundreds of varieties. So uh, I try to grow stuff that is uh, not only from here, uh, also the stuff uh, that I used to eat in Bangladesh, uh, our lot of uh, gourds, uh, butal gourds, uh, you know, bitter gourds and uh, okra and all kinds of stuff, uh, malabar spinach, so growing and finding different varieties, I, I made a lot of friends this way. There are so many people who like the diff different varieties of veggies. And um, I met so many people uh, while I was farming. And the appreciation is, you know, it's uh, really fulfilling when someone, you know, having your produce and, you know, saying good stuff about it. This is, uh, this, this is keeping us going. Uh, it's really, really hard work, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, when you see that you are growing your own food, uh, your family, uh, for family and the community. Last year, I was able to donate over 500 pounds of produce to the family family around us uh, who need it, uh, that is important. And uh, as uh, Jorge also mentioned, during this pandemic, the crisis of food, uh, it is skyrocketed. Food chain has been broken. Uh, now we really know what is the importance of you know, growing locally, supporting small farms. And the beauty of small farm is they can grow basically the stuff you want, right? So, and this is sometimes not possible for the big farmers. They can grow only a few stuff in a scale that they can sell, you know, to the chain uh, supermarkets. But I feel this is a, a really a good niche for the small farms. They can basically provide food that you like. Uh, you can even, if the local communities support, they come, they know their farms, they can request what to grow, right? That is not possible uh, for the big farmers. I, I, I feel that is, uh, that is really powerful. Uh, we, we can eat diverse uh, produce and veggies. And um, as I, I am growing my operation, uh, meeting a lot of people, it's really fun, I, I can tell you. It's, uh, I, I enjoy uh, all, all my time outdoors and uh, there are countless of people uh, who come to help. Uh, that is uh, wonderful. 
this is how I am making making this country a home, you know. That's so good to hear. I'm glad that both of you have had mostly positive experiences with your community and that you've really been able to forge new connections through agriculture. Um, I know both of you have talked a lot about how New Entry Sustainable Farming Project has helped you kind of adapt and get your, uh, get your farms um, to a place where they're profitable. Um, I'm curious if either of you have used other programs like government programs or, or NGOs um, that have supported you kind of along the way and helped you deal with any challenges that you might have come across. Um, yes, um, it, and it, it was through through new entry also that that I was uh, in contact with with um, FSA and the USDA. Right now, um, that, well, yeah, last year I got approved for a a, a high tunnel. Um, it's it's going to be a thirty foot by a hundred uh, foot um, from the NRCS uh, program. And it's a grant. It's a grant from the from the government, and 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 also uh, when I wanted to buy some equipment for my tractor, I went to the uh, FSA, uh, and they gave me a, a loan for for um, it was a tiller and a, a roto tiller. Sorry, it was a roto tiller and um, and what it was and a fertilizer fertilizer. And they gave me a very, very uh, uh, low interest rate, uh, and um, and I have like five years to pay it. So, so um, I think there are a lot of tools and 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 organizations that that can help you, and you have to reach out because 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 um, I think there's a lot of, a lot of help from the government um, in grants and in good loans. Uh, for for the farmers because because they want to see you succeed because they know that that if we we need food so also I I was in contact with American Farmland Trust and they also um, help us get a, a VCS tractor it's a it's a small tractor a, a portable tractor and it's very that that it's a very important tool if you work with high tunnels because you cannot put the big the big uh, John Deere tractor or 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 four wheeler into the into the high tunnel. So um, one one thing that I recommend is is for people to reach out, um, even if you don't think you need something or you don't have a problem, you have to know um, you have to know these organizations and do your homework because they they can help a lot and they can make you realize that you can do other things or, or sell or or or. Or there are marketing grants too that they can help you with, so it's very important to reach out and to and to even if if you don't need help, you don't think you need help, you're always going to need help, and you always need to progress and and evolve um, to always uh, try to have a profit and 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 see ahead of the needs of the markets and and the and the and the people. Thank you. Um, I think that those are some really good lessons that all beginning farmers can learn. Um, Mohammed, if you wanted to add, I don't know if there are any other programs that you've making, taken use of that have helped you kind of um, with your farming operation. Yes, yes. Uh, alongside New Entry um, Sustainable Farming Project, uh, I also got help from uh, American Farmland Trust. Uh, I applied uh, for a BCS uh, grant, uh, BCS 749. So it was it was pretty uh, easy and short application, um, and they they provided the grant. Um, that was really a game changer. Uh, I used the BCS for cover cropping last season. And this is the only tool I have at this moment. So th this is really great. And uh, I'm also working with uh, the FSA Farm Service uh, Agency, USDA Farm Service Agency. And uh, they, uh, they are helping me uh, with the NRCS Equip grant. Uh, 
uh, for, for another uh, high tunnel as uh, Jorge also got the same. And uh, I think those agency, uh, if we reach out, uh, it is important that we are reaching out. Uh, help is out there, uh, we need to ask. Uh, it is not super st straightforward, but uh, the uh, system is easy to follow. Uh, if, uh, if, if we uh, can follow the system, there are help out there. And in this time, uh, particularly, it is very important. Uh, and the government agencies, they are also trying to help. Uh, I, I got really uh, easy to navigate the system and uh, there's, uh, they are really, uh, uh, there is, their response is really quick. Uh, so uh, I find it uh, easy. And also I am working with the Legal Food Hub. Uh, with, they are helping with hiring people and the liabilities issues at the farm. As a new farmer, the rules and regulations, there are a lot of rules and regulations. So um, I, I find it very useful, uh, their uh, resources legal food hub uh, yeah currently i'm working with with these three uh, organizations apart from uh, new entry and uh, i i found those uh, really useful yeah well it sounds like both of you have had pretty good success with uh both government and non-government programs. And that's that's really good to hear. I know some folks really struggle with getting access to those. Um, that being said, is there anything you feel like they could do to better serve immigrant farmers like yourself? Is there anything that they could do to make it easier or more accessible in some way or another? Um, it, uh, well, at least, at least in my experience, people have People in those agencies have been very, very uh, polite and, and nice. The the only thing that I that I that I think they could like work on is that uh, I applied for the high tunnel about two and a half years ago, and maybe this summer I get the I get the funds. So it will be a, a wait of almost three years, and. And I mean, I know they have to do the, the checks and the and the and the and the and, and all the paperwork, but three years seems a little a little uh, too much of a time. And 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 I know it, it maybe uh, the the pandemic had a, a, a had to do with that, but but I, aside from that, I just I just think that the the the, the waiting time. Aside from that, I think people have been very helpful, and 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 very, and all, all and or at least in my case, when people came to, to check out the farm to see everything was uh, was going up, was going okay, they always ask me, um, what challenges do we see? They want to know uh, how they can help. So I, I think that's a very good 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 sign, a good thing that they do that. Um, um, maybe I don't see too many bad things because back in back in my country, it used to be way way worse, and people don't the government doesn't doesn't really get involved in in the needs of of, of the farming um, uh, culture. That is very interesting to hear. I don't know very much about how these programs work in other countries. Um, Mohammed, have you had similar experiences? What do you think would would help? Um, government and non-government agencies help um, immigrant farmers like you? I think one of the most important thing uh, from my experience is, uh, you know, finding the resources and uh, accessing the land. That was uh, one of the biggest challenge I was facing uh, when I was thinking I need to find something after completing the new entries three years program. So I started looking farmland from second year. And it took me two to 
two years, over two years to uh, find a piece of land. And it is in a conservation area in Lincoln. And you are basically leasing it. The difficulties is I'm not against with leasing, but the immigrant farmer, um, the land you are farming, if it could be yours, if you could own a piece of land, that would be more, uh, that would make more sense that you are growing your equity on the land. It is just, it is not just that you are farming on a land, over the years, the practice uh, you are using on the land, uh, on the lease or renting land, farmland, you cannot take it with you, right? So that is, I think, um, for the immigrant farmer is a big issue. Um, if we could somehow access the land in an affordable price where you can, you could plan for a long time, rather than you are moving from one piece of property to another piece of property, right? You are not growing your equity. And some of the, even some of the farming techniques, it takes years. Let's say, for example, if you want to start no-till farming method, which takes few years. So you started the no-till on a lease property, then you are out. Obviously you improve the land, but as a personal uh, uh, farm and sustainability, that is still, I think, uh, uh, questions. So that would be something that if the policymakers could do something for the immigrant farmers that well, we can afford the land uh, in, a, in an affordable price uh, so that it will be sustainable for a longer, longer term. But uh, particularly in Massachusetts, as you know, it's super expensive. And for us to think about a farmland, it's not even close. So considering the hard, how hard work, uh, working in a farm, I think uh, everybody should uh, pay a little bit more attention uh, to the farms, farming community their health insurance. Uh, I mean, rather than thinking this sector as a neglected sector, but I, I think that should be one of the top priority sector in our, uh, to, for our survival. So I, I, I would ask to the policymaker to make it as a priority, farmers, farmers' health and their well-being is where we are less than 2% people are farming. So to feed a country with 2% farmer, I think it is not, it is not logically, it is not easy. We have to depend on other countries. Uh, I think that there are many things uh, can be done. Uh, and I am hopeful that uh, all the agencies I am working with uh, they are supportive. Uh, I think that support needs to be even even bigger to not only us, to draw attention to other farmers, new farmers. We need more farmers to, you know, to supply, not the food, I mean good food. Uh, you can have traditional food, um, but uh, I, I don't think this is, this is the way to go. You need organic good food and organic good food is, I think in my personal opinion, it's not a privilege, it should be a right. Uh, rather than you are rich or poor, you should have a right to access organic good food. Uh, with that, I think, uh, I think the policymakers and everybody in the society should make food, which is a fundamental for our survival to make it as a number one priority, uh, not thinking, you know, farming is a neglected sector. Thank you. 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of what you're talking about are issues we hear from lots and lots of farmers. Um, I think especially access to land is one of the biggest, um, the biggest issues we hear from beginning farmers. Um, so I am not surprised to hear you talk about it. And I'm um, hopefully sometime in the near future, we can make it a little bit easier for folks who want to be farming to be farming. Um, so I know we are almost out of time. I just want to ask both of you all one more question. Um, so I know there's, we talked a lot about like the negatives, like what's hard about farming, like what are the things that lawmakers need to be doing to make it easier. But you know, far, there's a reason you guys are farming. Like I assume you love it. Um, the family in the movie, they use farming, you know, as a livelihood, but also as a way to connect with their culture. You know, they grow traditional Korean produce and they sell it to the Korean community. They also build connections with folks in their community, the people who help them farm. So. Just to end on a more positive note, I'd love to hear from both of you a little bit about like what positive things you feel like farming has brought to you, whether it's connection with your heritage and with your home country, or if it's with with building community around you or some, some other third thing that I haven't thought of. Well, yes, basically uh, connection with your family, connection with your with the with the soil with the, with nature is very important. Uh, last year we just got chickens and and people and our neighbors just come come to our yard to 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 see the chickens to be in more contact with the with the nature. Um, we have some clients in Boston that that it, the the life we we are outside of Boston like an hour away from Boston and it's like a rural town and. But our clients in Boston come to visit us, and then they say that all the stress that they they live under on the in the city, they like to come uh, every other weekend and and get some peace, and and they tell me how lucky we are. It's a hard work farming, but they 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 tell us we are so lucky because we are doing something that's important. We are in touch with nature, and. And we can be a side of that stress, a stressful lifestyle of the city, and and I, and I really really appreciate that, and 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 I think if if more people were, well, at least not farming, but have more contact with gardens or or, or with or with agriculture in, in some sort of way, um, we'll have a, a a less stressful world. And and people will stop to see sometimes what is important, and your contact with nature, with your family, um, like like Mohammed was saying, um, it, it has to be a right to be able to eat healthy organic food. Um, I think that that makes us um, less less sick, uh, or we are, our immune system is stronger some way. I'm not sure. I I, I think. But um, I, I, one of our clients uh, now is a good friend of mine. He always used to eat hamburgers and, and fast food. And he thought that um, a lot of things that you don't, when he got to see the farm, where the eggs come from, where, 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 where you grow veggies, how you grow veggies. And it really changed his, his, his mind and 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 I think now he's less stressed. He comes like a volunteer at our farm, just just to be in contact with nature. And I think the world needs a little bit more of that. Um, and hopefully, um, there is more opportunities for people to farm or to be in contact with nature. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Mohammed, if you want to wrap up and tell us a little bit about what you feel like agriculture has has given you in a positive way. Thank you. Uh, I think, you know, if I didn't start farming, uh, I would have, I would have missed a lot of stuff, a uh, lot of good stuff, good memories. Uh, this is the only first time we hear after coming here, free range chicken, case free chicken, those really was not the issue in, in back home. 
we had all free range chicken. Now we have a lot of farm raised chicken too. So I, I honestly feel um, it's a really uh, freedom of farming. Uh, I grow my own food. Uh, there is nothing better than that, you know? And the community you are making uh, and uh, I, I'm really, really, really happy to, you know, growing food, feeding myself and the community. Uh, and there has never been a better time. The time we are passing now, uh, the need for good food, as Jorge mentioned. I mean, if you think around us, every one of us have a primary care provider. In my sense, I think every family and every single person should have a food care provider. That means the farmer. So the food you eat, you need to know where is it coming from? How they are growing? Is it really good for me? This is the only thing you are eating. We are feeding our live cells, right, technically. So we need to, we need to really uh, think closely the food we are eating, how is it, is this sustainable? Are they using pesticides on the farm? What are the practices they are using? And, you know, I, I have a lot of good memories. All, the, all my customers, uh, I, I didn't, you know, have all sorts of marketing style but all the customers I, I found along the way, they are, you know, words of mouth. People are trying and they can, they can easily identify the difference of local, locally produced food, fresh, you are getting within an hour and they, they can, you know, identify the difference. So I, I think it's, uh, it's really a joy for me being out, growing my own food, making lots of friends, you know, all kinds of, uh, all countries, meeting students, families. Uh, I don't know if I just work in one single place, if I have uh, that opportunity. I, I, I am really enjoying every single uh, thing about, farming, though it is really hard work at the end of the day, it really makes me, you know, I think I should keep going. So that is the motivation is keeping me going, growing, you know, good food. And as we have more farmers, we can, we can support more local families. And that, that is powerful, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much uh, for having us. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing your time and your expertise with us. Um, I really loved hearing more about um, how you've come to be here and your farming stories. Um, I really, really appreciate how generous you all have been with us. And I really appreciate everyone who has joined us for the screening and for the conversation. I hope you liked it as much as I did. Um, we encourage you to follow Jorge and Mohammed on social media and to support the work that they're doing. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us at National Farmers Union. Um, please enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you at an event in the near future.